All right, welcome to uh, your first uh, flight of instrument flying. We're going to do uh, a couple items today uh, in terms of just the basic information and basic maneuvers that you'll go through in, fl in instrument flight training. We're also going to talk about some of the procedural aspects of it uh, as it pertains to things like uh, getting or picking up your IFR clearance to depart an airport, as well as uh, doing an instrument flight deck check to verify that all your instruments are working correctly since in instrument conditions, that's all you have to go by is by is by flying by instruments. You they have to work correctly um, prior to flight. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is how to pick up an IFR clearance. Now you only have to pick up an IFR clearance if you filed an IFR flight plan and you need to depart IFR. And what I mean by that, if there's the weather conditions outside our IMC for us to depart, we'll have to have filed an IFR flight plan so that ATC knows what we where we're going and what we want to do. Additionally, also, there's regulatory requirements for us to file an IFR flight plan. Now, in Daytona Beach, uh, so the flight schools do have a letter of agreement with Daytona Beach Air Traffic Control. Um, if we want to practice in the local area and the area that Daytona Beach uh, Traken has jurisdiction, we can request what's called a local IFR, which basically allows us to uh, request an IFR clearance without having to file the uh, associated flight plan. But that has to do with just Daytona and it's localized to Daytona Beach. If you're flying anywhere else, you must file a flight plan if the weather conditions are below VFR. So we'll uh, have assumed that we've filed a flight plan and in the flight plan we, we have put that we want to practice certain approaches in the remarks section. And uh, we need to pick up our IFR clearance. Now the first thing you'll do at an airport, picking up the IFR clearance depends on which type of airport you're at. Are you at a Charlie airport, a Delta airport, a Bravo, or, or maybe a non-towered airport? If you're at a towered airport, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, typically uh, you would either call ground control, or if they have a clearance delivery frequency, you would call the clearance delivery. If the Delta airport is closed, the tower is closed and, and it's now non-towered, at any non-towered airports, there's multiple ways to pick up your IFR clearance. One way is to request a relayed clearance from flight service station. Now, if you look in your chart supplement, uh, there is a number specific to the flight service station to pick up a clearance delivery. Um, and they can call whoever has jurisdiction over your area and pick up and relay a clearance to you. If you do get a clearance like that, you must get an expect, uh, sorry, a uh, clearance void time with that. So your clearance will only be valid for a certain amount of a period of time. But here in Daytona, we have a clearance delivery frequency. You can check your chart supplement and check your frequencies and see if there's a clearance delivery. The first thing we'll do when picking up the clearance is we will get our ATIS information. So according to our in-flight guide, ATIS is 132.875. So we'll put that in, 132.875. and put it to the active and ready to copy down the information. Daytona Beach International Airport Information, Zulu, 1153 Zulu observation. Winds 130 at 10, visibility 5, sky condition overcast 500, temperature 24, dew point 17, altimeter 3012, ILS 7 left approach is in use, landing and departing runway 7 left and 7 right, approaches being conducted to parallel and intersecting runways. Notices to airmen, multiple taxiway and runway closures. Advise on initial contact, you have information, Zulu. All right, so we'll take the data south this, it doesn't keep on running. So we have information Zulu, we copied on some pen information. Uh, we need the winds just to verify, uh, you know, just to know where the winds are coming from, obviously. And then uh, some information like the cloud cover, it's 500 feet, so we know we're gonna hit the cloud, uh, go into the clouds about 500 feet. Temperature's 2.4, that's pretty important, knowing that uh, since you're in IFR and IMC conditions, icing may be an issue uh, that you'd have to think about now. So temperature being 24, and we're only going to go up to about 2,000 feet today. We know that icing is not going to be an issue today. Altimeter is 3012. We'll put 3012 into our primary altimeter. And we'll also put into our standby. 3012. Seven left and seven rights in use. And so that's all the pertinent information we need. We know there are runway closures and taxiway closures, so we will have to pay attention to the taxi clearance. The next thing we're gonna do is actually call clearance delivery and pick up our clearance. And we're picking up our clearance. 
we want to use an acronym called CRAFT, C-R-A-F-T. C stands for clearance limit, R is root, A is altitude, F is frequency, the departure frequency, and T is chance bundle for your squawk code. That's kind of the order an IFR clearance will follow. So we'll pick it up and we'll see on what information they give us. So 119.3 is Daytona Beach clearance. Daytona clearance, riddle 462, request the IFR clearance. Riddle 462, you're cleared to the Daytona Beach Airport via radar vectors. Climb and maintain 2000, departure frequency 125.8, squawk 0224. Riddle 462, cleared to Daytona Beach via radar vectors. Climb maintain 2000, departure 125.8, squawk 0224. Riddle 462, read back is correct, contact ground point niner. Okay, so now we've gotten our clearance, and as you can see, our clearance limit was Daytona Beach. How we're going to get there, HTC is going to give us radar vectors, since we're staying in the local area to practice approaches. Our altitude was climb maintain 2000, we'll put that in our altitude bug to remember. Now typically if you're getting a clearance to go on a cross country, ATC will issue you two altitudes. One will be the lower altitude before the, uh, the lower controller con uh, coordinates with the higher controller to move us up to a higher altitude that we filed. And typically the higher altitude will contain a um, expected time, typically 10 minutes after departure. But since we're staying in the local area, they're only giving us climb maintain 2000. Uh, 125.8 is our transponder is our departure frequency and you'll notice our transponder code is 0224 now typically in the Daytona area uh, if we are local air, local flights they will either give us a transponder code that starts with 01 if it's VFR and 02 if it's IFR so we know that we got the correct clearance because we have a 02 in our uh, transponder code and that's how you pick up the IFR clearance we'll plug our transponder code just so we don't forget, into our transponder, our squad code. And we've got most of it set up here. So what we'll do from now is we'll actually start up the aircraft. We'll go to our before start checklist and before taxi checklist. And in the before taxi checklist, we will talk about what's something called an instrument flight deck check.